don't worry about the discrepancy in uh, in the flag and the timing because we're on a loop, remember. Twenty two kilometers to go in this stage five. And, uh, the big sprinters teams coming towards the front. HTC Columbia now. Lamprey have been doing work all day to keep the brake under control. And clearly, they need to try and get something out of this for Alessandro Pataki, their star sprinter, who's come into this Giro uh, Italia. There's Paul Voss, Mountains classification leader, who has been out in the brake today and uh, it's cooked basically. He's going to be swallowed up by the peloton fairly shortly. We were going through uh, potential sprinters, people even, even with an outside chance today and uh, I'll just sort of finish that off whilst we can for Colnago CSF Modolo uh, number 93 worth looking out for. Cofidis 2K will always be up there at some point he'll have a go. Uh, eight, number 85 little uh, rider from uh, Cofidis no real sprinters to go for in the Cervelo test team. They're all built around uh, the prospects of uh, Carlos Sastre, K. Stepan. Likewise, not too many uh, names. Rigoberto Uran would be the nearest one, I would imagine, has a decent turn of speed towards the end. William Bonnet, uh, you were suggesting, Sean, while we were away on an ad break, for B-Box Boy Telecom. He's not a bad... Uh, not a bad little sprint, well, a big sprinter. He can uh, really turn a fast pace if he wants to. Yes, he can, and we've seen him uh, do it before. And, uh, you know, depending again how he's got uh, through the last number of days, uh, he might have just been, you know, getting into the race. And uh, he's always a one to reckon with. And if he gets, you know, uh, gets into a good position, the team situation, not the grace of team, maybe for setting up the sprint for him. But if he can just stay up there, and the sprint is always as well. If you're a good sprinter, uh, you know, just getting the right brakes and uh, being in the right position at the right moment, following the right wheels. And sometimes it's just a little bit of luck. You follow the right wheel, it just opens up and you manage to get through in that last 150 metres. And uh, that's what you're hoping for as a sprinter. And if you've got the ability to stay up front, you are a good sprinter, well, then they're all going to try here. And uh, in the early days of a race, they all give it a go because, uh, you know, the, you feel good uh, if you're uh, in, you know, anywhere near your best shape at all, well, then you're going to be still feeling OK at this moment. Uh, two sprinters we wouldn't see in a mass sprint, I doubt, are this man here, Arashiro from B-Box uh, Boeing Telecom as Paul Voss gets taken back uh, now and he'll have to finish his day by himself as he's travelling at a snail's pace compared to the rest of them now as they uh, move on uh, up in pace uh, this man here, Arashiro, we wouldn't see he sprint to the end of the day if it all came back together because he's been out all day in the break and Giro Pino actually is a, not a bad sprinter and he's been out all day as well so uh, these two you can pretty much discount 20 kilometers to go though and the gap uh, was uh, hovering at that magic one minute per 10 kilometers Sean wasn't it they've only got the circuit to go so it's still they're still doing well these three yes sir, they're doing very well and I think it's a bit over the average because uh, the last time we see it was about 225 226 uh, so they have you know a nice advantage here and they are working well together uh, 20 kilometers to go uh, if you know they can continue on doing that as they are been doing the last number of kilometers there is a chance there that they could hold on i thought the gap would come down you know a little bit uh, quicker with the, the action up front of the bunch uh, they're doing a nice job and holding off very well 20 kilometers to go for the peloton in the run into the finale today on stage five in uh, nova liguri they started in novara this morning this 162 kilometer stage four men went on a breakaway it was Julian Fauchard of Cofidis, Paul Voss of Milram, Yukia Arashiro of Bui Telecom and Jérôme Pinot of Quickstep. Uh, they uh, stayed out for most of the day. Voss taking mountains classification points at the two uh, categorized climbs today. Uh, they weren't any more than third category climbs. One at Oralaska and one at the Passo Copi in memory of the great Fausto Copi, uh, the Campanissimo on the Boulevard de uh, Castellania after 111.4 kilometers. The Avalasca was at 93, 97.3, I beg your pardon. 
The four-man breakaway is now down to three with Paul Voss being taken back. His day is run and he'll be all by himself. The peloton pass under the 20 kilometre to go banner now and it uh, looks like Fabian Wegman from Milram who's driving this along. They must fancy the chances of Robert Foster today because he took a third place in Middleburg and clearly has some legs and we haven't seen Foster for quite a while at top level sprinting but he feels we've seen him in the uh, Vuelta, we've seen him in the Giro before and of course we used to see him in the Tour de France but he, we haven't seen him get right up there but he feels that he could do something that's for sure our three remaining men are Fosharp of Cofidis Arashiro of Big Telecom and Pino of Quickstep there is Voss on the left hand side of your shot uh, just uh, taking his own pace to get to the end he has Vladimir Gustav I think it is with him or is it uh, Gabriel Rash? I think it's Gustav, but anyway, Gustav, incidentally, even if it isn't uh, he, we've just seen in the shot there, was involved a little earlier on uh, with a bit of a tumble, I think, with uh, Sebastian Hado of Saxo Bank. The four main teams looking to contest something here are HTC Columbia for Matt Goss and Andre Greipel, depending on which one is uh, likely to be the most in shape. It's Garmin Transitions. Just pushing up this last little climb on the loop called the Gavi. It's an uncategorized climb, but you can see it uh, hurts a few people. There's Blo, Guillaume Blo, who's uh, just uh, dropping off the back once again. So Garmin Transitions for Tyler Ferrari, HTC Columbia for Goss and or Greipel. Uh, Rambobank coming towards the front uh, just a little bit now. They have the the points jersey on the shoulders of uh, uh, Graham Brown. But also Lamprey. They've done most of the work today. Uh, limiting the gap. They'll want to be up towards the front once again. Keep them up towards the front. Alessandro Pataki. And that final, uh, that last time check, 146, was the advantage for our breakaway. So. Uh, you know, they're still holding on. It's still a nice advantage uh, at the, around the 19 kilometers to go, that was. Um, we can see there the bunch not going that fast because they're very much grouped together on that little bit of a drag as they talked about the Gavi. Um, interesting to see now if they can really keep it going up front and hold on to their advantage. Uh, it looks like they will, you know, go a long ways. Some sort of problem here for Aqua and Sapone. Just suddenly dropped right off the back. It's Gazzelli. No, it's not Gazzelli. Is it? No, they've got a Codol. definitely got a gap. Uh, Massimo Codol. They've got uh, a problem. Hand up going up from uh, Codol. Saramento is the other rider with him. Are they waiting for Garcelli? That's what it was. He was just uh, putting his arm up to show where he was, I think, one then. As Garcelli is now on his wheel. <laughs> Here we are. We'll see a replay of this, I'm sure. It's gonna, the camera is going to pan over to the left. And there is uh, Codol wondering where on earth his team leader is. Uh, Gartelli, of course, well, Gartelli himself, Sean, is no mean sprinter when he wants to be. Uh, no, I think in a small group he is able to, you know, uh, defend himself in a sprint. But in the big bunch sprints, I don't think he will get involved in that because, uh, you know, to win a one, I, he hasn't got that outright speed and uh, he's not going to take the risk here, I think. he's. Uh, his aim will be to get you know through this stage, not lose any more time, and uh, wait for the more undulating, the more mountainous days. Surely, you think so? Well, it's interesting. In the last sprint, there were three. Um, was it three? Three Australians up in the top uh, six or seven or eight. The other man we have mentioned is Peyton Cook, of course, for Saxo Bank. Arashiro on the front at the moment. Uh, driving things along. He's uh, a bit of a terrier, this guy, isn't he? And he's got very experienced and uh, tough Jerome Pino with him. Pino went to quick step uh, when uh, Sylvain Chavanel went. In fact, it, it, was a, it, is, it is said that it was a prerequisite of the contract that was done by Lefebvre and uh, Patrick Lefebvre, head of quick step and Sylvain Chavanel, that uh, Chavanel would come only if he could bring Pino with him. So uh, that often happens, doesn't it, Sean? Or it has often happened in the past that uh, you have trusted riders who, uh, they may be in different teams, but uh, 
uh, trusted drivers you you want to to build around you you can you can bring them either from your previous team or you, you say i'd like that rider to ride with me yes and um well i think uh, he would be a good domestic pino uh, you know he would be important for chavanel and uh, moving to a, a foreign team a french uh, two french riders moving to a belgian team i think you know you need that uh, they need that as well somebody to put you know to move with them uh, probably, you know, to share room as well at the beginning until you get to know the uh, the riders within that new team. And when there's an affordable team, often we see that uh, one or two riders, and especially a, a big name from an from a, an outside an outside nationality, going to a team. Often it's a case where they take a teammate with them or a friend with them from the same country. Did it happen when your uh, contracts were up for renewal, Sean? In your career, did you ever say, well, actually, you know, I'd, I'd love to come to your team, but I'd really like this guy to come to? Yes. Well, there was a few occasions. In my career, where I had uh, a number of riders who were good domestiques and who, you know, were very loyal to me, and I, uh, I took them along to other teams as I moved on. How, how, how much do you think that contributed to your success as you went through uh, your career? Well, I think uh, first of all, yeah, you know, you you know the uh, domestiques you've got, uh, that's three or four uh, domestiques, and uh, you know you can trust them. And uh, from working with them, you know the mentality is that they just want to work as a domestique, and other than that, they have uh, you know no further thoughts. And uh, that is very comforting because you know they will be there every time you need them in the race that you're really going for. Uh, they will give you 100 percent as a domestique. Uh, so it is. Uh, assuring to take them along with you and uh, it's very important because when you're going to a new team you know the riders uh, in that team you know them but you haven't got the information that you know which you, which you gain with working with riders for a number of years and uh, so it is a little bit of security that you take two or three riders and uh, you know if you're going as a sprinter if you're going as a general classment rider you know you you always need those very loyal domestics yes there's uh, it can be taken to the nth degree though can't it uh, there was even some talk, uh, some suggestion that, uh, and without, not without uh, some sort of basis, when you look at the sort of quality of riders that were built around uh, Lance Armstrong, that he actually bought, <laughs> bought all his rivals out of a position, that uh, he brought them into his own team, therefore they couldn't rival him anymore. So uh, uh, it's, a, it's one way of looking at it, I guess. Well, it wasn't the first time, I think. Uh, that's, that's not, uh, definitely not the first time. In the time of Marx, uh, you know, when you read back uh, through the those years there was a lot of riders with the max team that he took on because uh, he he was uh, he was thinking and uh, that he was a little bit afraid maybe they could be a threat in the big tour so uh, you know in the Maltini team and some of the big teams of Eddie Max at the time there was a lot of riders who were capable of winning you know very big classics and uh, possibly big tours ourselves yeah the same I think was true of Van Loy as well they would uh, buy in would uh, get people as uh, in his team who would be his direct threats in the races he wanted to win 24 13.8 kilometers it's looking good at the moment uh, but it'll have to they'll have to work a little harder to bring back this breakaway chapeau to the three guys in front 124 13 kilometers it oh it's it's very tight indeed elastic is broken yep it is. It's going. Uh, it's going bang at the back there. Daniel Daniela Vis was the uh, rider, Swiss rider from Cervelo, just uh, trying to get around the remnants of that group to see if he could chase back on. But it's a long, hard thing. It doesn't take very much uh, of a gap to make it almost impossible to close again, does it? At this sort of speed. No, and uh, at the tail end of a bunch. If you're back there, there's a reason for that. And uh, <laughs> we see the Katusha right there. I think it was Ignatyev as well. Surprising to see him out there, but. Uh, sometimes, you know, there is a little, uh, little bit of tactic going on here. They know now that, you know, within 13 kilometres of the finish about, uh, just take it easy, roll in and wait for another day. And of course, you know, Mik uh, Mikhail Ignatiev, we've seen him a lot in the, uh, in the big tours, especially in the zero ways, in the breakaways. Um, and if you lose contact here for the bunch, well, there's no point in chasing, uh, chasing trying to get back in because, uh, you know, a couple of minutes, uh, those guys, it's not going to make any difference to the general classmen for them because they're, they're out of it anyway and they will be out of it as the race go on. The colleague Nati, who did a lot of uh, work in breakaways in the uh, Tour of Romandy, he's probably in that group there. It's absolutely uh, identifiable straight away as soon as you see him. Flat backed, small rider. position on a bike. 
can certainly uh, just plough away for ages. Hasn't been quite as um, in the public spotlight as he was when he was at Tinkoff. Just, uh, I think people didn't know him quite as well then. They suddenly uh, appear on the scene and go on enormous great long breaks. Or try and jump off the front of the peloton with about two kilometres to go, or five kilometres to go, which is what he did. Now and again, they had to bring him back, him and Pavel Brut, and of course uh, Vasily Kirienko was there as well. One Andre Greipel at the back of this train. There is the world champion, number one on his back for Cadell Evans. Rabobank coming to the front now. And uh, pushing the pace along. It's uh, Volker Malema, I think, doing the work on the front. This is where it starts to get a little nervous for uh, some of the uh, uh, riders in jerseys. Including the world champion's jersey, I have to say. He's just passing in between Vincenzo Nibali on the left-hand side and uh, Pippo Pozzato on the right-hand side. He wants to get up to his two men in front. Uh, he's got uh, Sant'Ambrogio just ahead of him, and he looks like he's uh, getting onto that wheel. And the other one is Michael Shah, I think, towards the front. 11 and a half kilometres to go. They're still working really well, but uh, Forshaw is beginning to suffer. This is a marvellous piece of riding by Aaron Shiro here, Sean. He's uh, been uh, positive all day, hasn't he? By that I mean he's been taking his turn all the time. He's never slacked at all, and uh, he's still riding well. Yes, he is, and uh, you know, all three are contributing well. Maybe, you know, uh, Fouchard weakening a little bit, but uh, they all have to continue working here. And, uh, you know, if uh, if they can continue on as they have been doing the last number of kilometres, the gap, uh, I think it's uh, still, you know, pretty, uh, pretty good and it looks good all the time. Uh, but they're just really going to have to work all the way to the finish and, uh, you know, Arashira knows that if he can get to this one, he has a very good chance of getting a stage victory. Pino also, he's a good sprinter, but I think Arashira might be just the faster one of the three out front at the moment. If he doesn't uh, bury himself too much, Pino will be well aware of that as well. Ten kilometres to go for our three escape riders. Yukia Arashiro from Baybox Buick Telecom, Jerome Pino of Quickstep, driving the pace along, and Julien Fourchard of the uh, Crawford's team. And the peloton have to try and shut this down quickly now. HTC Columbia, Rabobank, and uh, Lamprey have been working all on the front. Lamprey have taken a bit of a back seat now. Garmin transitions have taken over their role. This, this is good uh, territory for a breakaway. Much more difficult to cut down the gap when everybody's vying for places, trying to get up to the front to keep out of uh, out of the way. And I think it's exactly what they're doing with the big jersey, Sean. They're trying to bring it to the front before we get to this village. Yes, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, as we see our three leaders going through the village, they are narrow speeds. That's advantage of the three breakaway because when the bunch comes through, uh, as we see them here, 58 seconds the advantage. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be you know a tight one. Uh, but the bigger road here, it suits the big bunch. But as we get a little bit further down the road, uh, the narrow streets through that village, that will you know slow down the bunch a bit, and uh, it will you know play into that hands of the three uh, breakaway riders out front. Here they go into this very tight section uh, down by the railway tracks here. So all the three riders up ahead with uh, just a shade over eight and a half kilometres to go. And they're driving it through here now, HTC Columbia. All getting through that first narrow section. Front now, Astana bringing riders to the front as well, keeping Alexander Vinukorov out of trouble if they possibly can. The big jersey of Vicente de Bali up towards the front as well. You saw them running around the outside of the peloton to try and keep their riders out all the way. Still, Jerome Pinot is uh, pushing on with Arashiro in his wheel, and uh, Forcha at the moment uh, keeping going. Well, it looks like Nyatev on the front. 
it's Katusha anyway. Katusha now pushing on. Trying to cut this gap down. They have uh, Ipo Pozzato. Will certainly want to have a go. There he is, just uh, lurking behind the big jersey. The uh, red jersey there, one number, number 163, with the blue shorts, is Graham Brown of uh, Rabobank. He is leading the points uh, competition. He's comfortably up at the moment, good space he's in at the moment, about 20 uh, back. Just in between Nibali and uh, Pozzato. Oh, good on you, sir. Shah is burying himself here, Sean. I don't think he'll be the man who makes it uh, over the line either first or second if these two uh, arrive, or if these three arrive together. He looks like he's uh, nearly cooked. Yes, he looks like the one who has uh, softened the most of the three out front. But uh, again, if they get uh, into that final kilometre and there's a little bit of tactic stuff, the cat and mouse, as they say in cycling terms, you know, he could just... Uh, he could steal away, and we've seen it, you know, many times in breakaways. The one who looks the weakest of the uh, the breakaway sometimes, you know, they can just steal the march, and uh, you know, one or two attacks in that final kilometre. And uh, if you just pick the right moment, sometimes it can work out. Uh, and he is really, you know, digging in here. He's uh, he, we can see that he's suffering a bit, uh, but maybe his style as well. Sometimes it's. You know, it's deceiving when you see uh, the style of a rider maybe, you know, rolling or pushing a little bit of bigger gear and it looks that he's not as smooth, not as fresh as the others and, uh, you know, they can give you a surprise when they smell the whitewash or smell the paint, <laughs> as they say, in cycling terms, sometimes it can uh, change a rider a lot. Jérôme Pinot still looking in good shape ahead of uh, Yukia Areshiro. But Pay Box Week Telecom is now coming to the front to do his turn. And uh, Julien Fauchard has had uh, an up, a bit of an up and down season. 12th in a stage in uh, Tour of Asturias. Doesn't really prepare you much for this sort of breakaway. But he had a couple of races, certainly in the classics, uh, the Flandering classics, where he simply couldn't uh, stick with it in the end. Didn't finish two out of three days of Japan. Six kilometers to go then. And none of these riders have had a super, with the breakaway, have had a super, um, super season so far. 55 seconds is the gap with uh, 5.8 kilometres to go and uh, a brave attempt, a valiant attempt, but it's now tumbling down, Sean. Yes, but uh, still 55 seconds. Uh, still, a, still a way to go, yeah. Yes, uh, you know, just over the 5 kilometres to go. Uh, very big road here, very open, and that uh, is going to be the difficult one for our three breakaway, who are, you know, certainly tiring. Uh, the big bunch, you know, they come up much... Uh, much stronger on this uh, style of road, big open roads. Uh, but uh, you know, it is to play for uh, 55 seconds if they can really dig in deep. And it all depends on how much the three have left out front. If you know they still have a little bit of power left, they could just about hold on. Did you see Colombia? They're really doing the, the uh, work now. Garmin transitions, then a Lamprey, the Daniello Hondo is the first of the Lamprey riders. Under the five kilometres to go banner for our three breakaway riders. And it's going real hard here because uh, some of these riders absolutely swinging off the back, Sean. They're really suffering now. Yes, and that looks, is that Tondo? It could well be. Shouldn't, uh, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. The man closing the gap for Sky is Steve Cummings. He's done so much work the other day for Bradley Wiggins on the front. Cummings finds himself off the back of this little group for one reason or another and is trying to pull it back. Marcel Zieberg looking over the shoulder to see where everybody is. He's lost the rest of his men. Jérôme Pinot, uh, Yukira Arashiro and uh, behind them Julien Fourchard and they're doing very well indeed still. Uh, pushing on. 30 seconds it's got down to now. Four kilometres to go. Surely they'll be taken back by HTC Columbia. A Lamprey et al. But look at the damage it's done behind. 
there's uh, still a fairly big group but there's a whole load of people stuck off the back one two three skymen up towards the front now Sean Gregory Henderson clearly winding up for a crack at this one yes and uh, there's uh, a look a lot of the riders, uh, the teams with the sprinters starting to appear, Columbia, Sky, we can see Lamprey, uh, so, you know, the riders with sprinters within their team, they are all appearing, and, um, you know, it looks, it looked like for a moment there, there was a little bit of a slow down, the group got, you know, very much across the road, and when you see it as it is here, uh, you know, is it that uh, they're not going maybe full speed, uh, uh, very much grouped and uh, normally when you see in the final with three kilometers to go it's much more lined out uh, interesting to see now what the next uh, the next adventure the next gap will be for our three leaders because at the four kilometers 30 seconds uh, it's going to be important here as we go through the three kilometers to go that was an interesting piece of maneuvering by uh, Marco Velo who's who brought to Alta Weyland up on the outside of the peloton and just uh, went straight into the line pushing one of the uh, HTC Columbia riders out the way so we could get his man Walter Whalen right up to the front. Uh, good riding by Marco Velo who knows a thing or two about lead outs. And Sky it is now who've taken up the charge at the front. Gregory Henderson or Grant Chris Sutton are the two fast men for this group. I think in this sort of company it's liable more to be Henderson than Sutton but you don't know. 20 seconds. 2.3 kilometers to go. Sky going to try and shut this one down. Is still fracturing here. Uh, under the pressure being put on at the front, some of the riders behind are beginning to suffer a little bit. Swinging over. And allowing the next man through. Look out for the number 122 on the back of the Lamprey jerseys. That is Alessandro Pataki. Not too many Lamprey men around, and I'm not surprised, Sean, because they've done all the work today. Yes, and um, you know maybe they're just holding off a little bit for the moment. If there's a team that want to take it up, uh, well, then you leave them do that. And if you can just hold back onto that final kilometre, and sometimes we see teams doing that, as we see the advantage for our three leaders is just going to be... Uh, a little bit too far for them to make it to the finish as we can see the bunch just you know want to swallow them up in the next uh, 500 meters yeah parashiro has uh, just backed off the gas a little bit pino is still going for it 1.4 kilometers to go this is the uh, the roundabout Oh, we've got to be careful here. This is the roundabout with the two tight left-handers. They've all got to try and get round. Arashiro now digs deep to try and get away. He's a little terrier and uh, Pinot gets on the wheel. Fourchard can't stay with that sort of pace. Yukia Arashiro pushing hard, and Jerome Pinot has managed to get back onto his wheel. That's good. Fourchard is still battling. Good man. Into the last kilometre. And what We've a fight he's putting up. What a fight. And they've got to, that left hand bend to go still, remember. And maybe that's what Arashiro thinks. If he can get to that bend, about 520 metres. No, it looks like he's set up. That's it. And Pino not able to take it up or doesn't want to take it up because he has to take it up here with Arashiro. If he does that, they have some little chance of holding off, but oh. I think it's game over. Oh, a little flick on the inside there. It's being a little bit difficult. This is going to be a difficult corner. Look out. Let's make sure everybody gets around it. They've taken it as slow as they possibly can. Look out for the, uh, the yellow bicycle of Alessandro Pataki. And Arashiro takes it up once again. That's incredible. He's pushing on, pushing on. Yukio Arashiro is trying to go for this one. And still they jostle behind to see who's going to take up the sprint. Now Jerome Pino comes around the outside. Surely the sprinters are leaving it very, very late indeed. There's only 75 metres to go. They're going to miss out completely. And surely Fauchard can't get it. It's Jerome Pino. Pino gets it from Fosha and Arashiro. That is the most unbelievable finish. I thought they had them. I really did. Maybe the checking of speed at that last corner was the undoing of them. And Arashiro kicked again. And then Pinot came around the outside. There's lots of shaking of heads in disbelief here at the commentary boxes. Well, I never. What a finish. What a finish indeed. And what a win for Jérôme Pinot here in the Giro d'Italia. I don't think any of us had that within the last kilometre, Sean.
no, and I think uh, the Royals in the bunch as well, they thought it was, you know, over for the three breakaway and uh, possibly just knocked it back a little bit to spare a bit for the final sprint to set up the sprint for their, their sprinters. And, uh, you know, Arashira, he did a magnificent job. He was so, so strong. And uh, Pino, so cool there, you know, just closed him down, stayed on the wheel, really took big risk because it, I was, you know, sure that they were going to get gobbled up there in that last uh, five or 600 metres. Uh, but, uh, you know, thanks to Arashira, the effort he made, I think, you know, he was the one who uh, helped to hold hold the punch off. So Yukio Arashiro once again shows he's a great terrier, but a super win for Jiro Pino. They were never going to catch him once they. I think also that uh, the physical nature of that last corner, Sean, really played into the hands of the three. They got around it. Everybody slowed down for that last corner as well. Uh, and not, uh, I'm not too sure that the Astana's trying to muscle their way in with uh, Alexander Vinukorov uh, to try and keep him out of trouble didn't slow the whole lot down everybody just wanting to take it real easy well uh, often is the case and there's a team setting up for their sprint there, uh, another team comes through with a general classment uh, rider and you know upsets the uh, uh, the setup of a team on the front and they lose a little bit of momentum and in that case uh, you know, you uh, you lose you lose out by just you know 20 15 20 meters which was the case for the big sprints today and uh, Pino just taking you know a magnificent victory and you know what a ride by the three who held on out front a terrific ride by all of them Chapeau to all of them, and what a fight by uh, Julien Fauchard. He was suffering like a dog for the last 10 kilometres and hung on in there, just missed out. That would have been a very sweet victory indeed, but any one of those three deserves it. Absolutely. Lamprey, all that work, nothing out of it. Once again, not having the greatest Giro so far, but that's a terrific victory for uh, uh, Giron Pinot. Well, he hasn't had a, a win so far this season. The best placing he's had is uh, 16th yesterday on the team time trial. So, uh, oh no, tell a light. He got an 11th place in the first stage of the Tour de Hotvar way, way back in, uh, what, early March was that been out? Late February, something like that, Tour de Hotvar. Remember, the weather was absolutely awful. So he's a bit of a tough cookie. But uh, Pino taking the win today in no part, in no small part, thanks to the uh, extended kicks of Yukia Arashiro, who finishes up with a third spot. Barra is the best of the rest. Fourth, ahead of Gregory Henderson, Alessandro Pataki, Graham Brown and Andre Greipel.